Hi everyone, Sean here. Um, I'm going to get started on a project and going to shoot a video for it. I've not really shot any project videos before. Uh, I've wanted to. Uh, I've taken pictures of projects to, to make instructables that I've never made either. Um, but uh, anyhow, I, 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 I want to shoot videos and I, I haven't. I've always let my shop stop me, but um, I've taken a little cue from Big Clive and uh, I've cleared a space here on my bench that I know I can work in um, that will appear clear to you. Lord knows if I zoomed out uh, that would... No, we're not going to do that. Anyhow, um, but I've, I've been wanting to shoot videos of, of my project, so here we go. Um, this is it's, it's a piggy bank that I'm going to be building. Um, so I collect items and then I build projects out of them. So I, I collect things, I add it to my hoard, and as I go through looking at all my shiny things, I think about how I could use them together and what I can make out of them. And I, I have all these plans, these grandiose plans of, of the, you know, ideal man cave that I'm wanting to build with, you know, all my doodads and gizmos. Um, and eventually I do get around to building some of them, and this is one, um, I'm, I'm still lacking the battery that's going to go into this, and I need to build a, uh, a charging circuit, um, something basic, um, that to, to, to charge the battery when it needs to be. It doesn't need to be plugged in all the time, uh, because all it's running is the microprocessor in a coin mechanism, um, microprocessors under here. Um, that's all it's really running, and um, so, and and whenever a coin goes in, it activates a um, a solenoid right here. Uh, but it's uh, well, I don't know. It's 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 got a magnetic coil that's always running. I wasn't thinking about. Um, I don't really know what its straw is. I guess I could hook it up and uh, you know. You know, see what it actually draws, but I need a battery and a charger, but other than that I've got everything I want. Um, so I, I get items, I collect them, and then I, I build out of them. So this, uh, I bought a coin mechanism off of uh, some get weird stuff cheap website. I don't remember which one it was, um, but I bought it because I didn't have one, um, but now I do. And uh, my uh, brother label maker, the uh, Black on Clear uh, what's that, half inch? Yeah, black on clear half inch uh, label fits perfect in the slot they give you here. Um, they're intending you to use that kind of label, I assume. Uh, so I've printed my quarters only. But this mechanism, it's kind of neat how it works. Um, it has a sensor right here, and you can see that I already have a quarter in that sensor. And it is in a track and is spring loaded. So now that I've released that spring, I can pull that out of its track, and you saw the quarter came with it. And that's how this works, is you put uh, your coin of interest, uh, I only want this to accept quarters, put a quarter in there. I only want it to accept uh, my gold tokens uh, at my local Chuck E. Cheese, you'd put a Chuck E. Cheese token in here. and. Uh, you know, it'll only accept them. Um, partially how it works is by putting the coin in here, it adjusts where this uh, mechanism rides in its track, and that uh, determines the size of coin that can go through and the size of coin that will uh, automatically be ejected to the coin return. Um, Secondly, how it works, it produces a magnetic field. Um, I don't know if you can see, there are three separate uh, pods here uh, wired up. Here, let's, uh, here, let's take this apart so you can see. There we go. So that here's one, and it has a green and a yellow wire, and it has this back plate as 
you know, the one that slides in the track that, that, that locates everything and slides it up and down. That is the back of that pod. Then there's the center one here, and it has two red wires going to it. And then there's what is my right hand side here, which is another pod that has a, a green and yellow wire on it as well. Um, we will crack this open very carefully because it is some very fine loose wires in here. Oh, easy does it. Come on now. Get back in your hole. So I don't know if you can see that. Um, it is a just a tight turned uh, enamel copper wire coil. Um, that's got to be five, 500 turns. Uh, really tiny wire and uh, it would have been wound around a, a, a mandrel of some sort and then uh, heated uh, to, to set the, uh, the enamel and set the shape and then put in here. So I'm going to put this back on uh, but so this this coil sits in the center of the pack, and it would just create a a magnetic field. And these coils that sit either side of it, and that's what's inside of here. It is a. I'm not going to open it up for fear of, of breaking it. I was a little rougher with that than I wanted to be. Um, but they're just, it's such fine wire, I don't want to risk breaking it. But it's the same thing, it's uh, not as many turns, uh, because it is just a sense coil. But what it is doing, and there are little pegs that locate these together. What it is doing is it is sensing the magnetic field that's being produced by the large coil in the middle. And then this coin goes between them. and it is sensing how that magnetic field is being disturbed um, and how it is being changed and this has a coil just the same and it so this there's you know there, there's this first slot that the coin of your choice that you want to match you put your your coin uh, in here and then there's this second slot here and that is the one that let's see if you can well it almost went through but that is the uh, when you insert the coin it goes between those two coils there so we'll put that back in put our spring back on and uh, put our quarter back in there again uh, the height of this uh, the spring pulls it down and the, the coin sets the height. Ooh, huh, it might help if I put my hardware back in it. Thanks for everybody that yelled at the, uh, at the screen right there that I forgot to put my screw back in. I heard you. See, it really does help to yell at the television and the computer and the radio because the people on the other side can hear you. So, there you go. Put that back in. Put the spring back on. Put our reference coin back in. Um, so the reference coin sets the height of this uh, in its track and that automatically um, will limit which coins can go through. So only the correct diameter of coin uh, can make it to the back. The uh, s smaller or larger coins will automatically drop um, as they're put in. They'll automatically drop to the, uh, to the coin return. Uh, coins of the correct diameter will make it through and will be sensed by the coil. And if the coil says, or if the uh, the processor says that the the uh, alchemy of the coin is correct, uh, it will trigger this solenoid. And when this solenoid triggers, it lifts a foot. 
here in the back, uh, which is the bottom of the return ramp. So normally, when the coin goes in, it hits that foot and is returned. Now, if it says yes, if the microprocessor says yes, this is a good coin, it will activate the solenoid and that foot will be pulled out of the way and at that time the coin will fall into the tray. Um, it is at that point that it, after it passes this foot because uh, if the timing is not exact the coin doesn't actually fall through and gets returned it doesn't you don't want to activate or say yes I've received payment uh, when you have it so there is an infrared eye uh, between uh, this board which is under this cover which contains the microprocessor and uh, your, your inputs you've got a potentiometer for sensitivity here um, and uh, you've got uh, a switch right here to determine how long so whenever whenever it does sense that a coin has fallen through fallen through sorry wow when it senses that a coin has fallen through it breaks the uh, the the beam between the uh, infrared sensors here uh, the transmitters on this side the receivers on this side uh, whenever it breaks that beam it will trigger uh, it will close the circuit on um, it will close the circuit between black and white um, and it will close that for a period of time that you select with uh, with this uh, switch right here. Uh, I'm using that, so what that does is that, that ensures that the coin again has fallen before it will signal that it's gotten paid. Um, I'm using it to increment a counter. Uh, this is an Omron uh, H7EC, that's Hotel 7 Echo Charlie. It's an Omron counter, and uh, I think it might, This might, I'm thinking this might be a knockoff, because the, uh, the hold button does not seem to function as it should. Um, but whenever I tap the wires here, it, it increments up. It is self-powered. It has a, I guess, a button cell inside. It's a LCD. Ooh, just went over a thousand. That's so fun. Um, but this is this button is supposed to hold. So whenever I flip that, it shouldn't be incrementing anymore, but it does. Um, but uh, closing these two contacts increments it up. Closing these two contacts will... Uh, I, so don't, I, I really kind of don't want to do this because it's over a thousand, and that means I've sat here and done... You know this a thousand times, one thousand forty, one thousand fifty, sixty, seventy. Anyhow, um, just to demonstrate, closing these other two contacts blanks it to zero. I don't know if you saw that, um, but that blanks it to zero. Uh, this will count the number of coins that go through this mechanism. Um, or that it is that it collects any coins that return it won't it will not increment the counter up any uh, so this is going to be the front of the piggy bank uh, it's going to have uh, aluminum angle uh, border around it and you, you see the holes here and here that will uh, bolt it into its angle iron or its uh, aluminum angle uh, frame that's what part of what this project is about is I've gotten the aluminum brazing rods. Let me grab those. They're here somewhere. Well, I'm not going to spend too much time looking for them because uh, there's one. I don't see the package, but I did find one I've been playing with. One that I I did this joint here with. Uh, but it is an aluminum alloy that has been fluxed and has, or has a, a fluxing agent built in, um, has a really low melting point. Uh, you have to make sure your aluminum is good and clean, uh, but you're able to heat your joints with a, a regular propane torch and uh, 
lay this in and braise aluminum together. It works really well once you learn what you're doing. Uh, there is a learning curve to it. Um, that I've just very recently overcome myself, so I'm going to go ahead and undertake this project. Uh, so the frame will be built out of aluminum, and you've got the uh, the plexi, so you can see inside and see what's happening. This will be the coin acceptor or the coin receptacle. Um, this is a post office box door, and uh, it will be the uh, the access around the back to get the coin receptacle out and collect your your coins. Uh, so it will be mounted on the bottom around the back and just above it in a panel will be the Omron counter uh, so whenever and you see this little switch I've got mounted here uh, perfect clearance just inside the locking mechanism so whenever you open this to retrieve your coins this switch will be it's a, a single pole uh, or double pole single throw uh, it will be wired to the reset of the counter. So whenever you open this to retrieve your coins, you simply toggle the switch up and down and it will reset your counter. Obviously you need to write down the number from your counter before you reset it. So make a note of, of your coins. It's how many are in the, you know, the number it's showing is the number of, of coins you have in a box. Uh, and you collect those, reset the counter, put the empty container back in, and you know, it's it's you know it's not doing anything. You could use this to signal a start to anything. Uh, my ball machine on the wall and tell it you know to run the ball machine for you know ten minutes whenever a quarter is received, uh, something like that. Uh, I'm just going to have it sitting on a shelf uh, for me to drop quarters in uh, whenever I see it. Um, so that's the plan. That's what we're going to be building. This it's it's a neat little mechanism. It's 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 surprisingly simple and effective, and I I, I like that. Uh, so anyhow, that's uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, let's see how this goes. I'm I'm not sure. I've not shot any videos like this. Okay, folks. So at some point the uh, the video stopped and I didn't realize it. Um, I really should make sure to keep an eye on it. The camera's way up there. Hello, way up there. And I have behind me, uh, wee. Obviously, I'm looking at a screen. Behind me, this way, there is a screen. And it's actually a security camera that is looking at the screen of the camera I'm recording with. That way I can see, yeah, it's it's pretty janky, but uh, anyhow, you're way up there. I didn't realize we had stopped. I was struggling with this thing, and that's all that happened. I was sitting here trying to figure out why it wasn't working right. It wasn't tallying right. I was pretty sure I was on the correct wires, and it just wasn't working, but um, yes. But I did wind up getting it working. Um, I just wasn't getting enough juice. Uh, it's just the juice. Uh, so a little DC, uh, what is this? Um, she is charged, so I don't want to pop myself. 1,000 microfarad, 25 volt, little DC cap. Uh, it's just what I had in my parts box over there that works. It, it uh, gives enough juice to keep, uh, you know, it's got enough, it, it's, it, what, what draws and what was happening is the coil wasn't clicking hard enough over and the coins were getting stuck. So, uh, it's that, you know, it, it, it's a coil, it's an inductive load and what do you need to have in your system to handle the, uh, the instant draw of an inductive load uh, when you put a capacitor in. So <laughs> that's taken care of that. Um, it's got the counter working right. Um, so set that up. Can you see? 
Yeah, I can't tell if you can see ice. I know you can see that. I'm assuming you can see the counter. Um, so that, the uh, the counter is between, what is this now? Uh, uh, white and white and ground. Okay, so yeah, white is the, the, the trigger and it's triggered against ground. Um, that goes over here. Uh, let's go ahead and reset the uh, counter. There we go. Um, LED uh, between hot uh, between hot and the gray wire. Well, what do they call that? Uh, counter meter uh, for a powered powered counter. Um, and that is also controlled the the dwell time, the duration that this stays high is uh, determined by the little switch I'd shown you pointed out on the side earlier. So here, let's drop a qu quarter in. Um, counter counts up one digit. Uh, LED flashes, and the coin does drop. It doesn't get stuck like it uh, ha had been earlier. I've also got the sensitivity set correctly now. Um, one out of 50, one out of 75, uh, it, it will kick it down to the coin return, and then you put it back in and it'll take it. But there you see the uh, LED flashing and the counter counting up, doing what it's supposed to do. Yay. Pretty happy about that. I don't have any slugs, really, uh, anything to try to put through that are incorrect. I've got some... Um, I don't know what happened there. I guess that was it just not wanting that quarter. Um, but uh, let's grab something that's not quarters. All right, dime and a nickel. Oh, I've got a nickel. Dime just come on, falls through, nickel falls through. So, quarter, it takes so, um, let's see what kind of, now that one doesn't have hold function, here we go. Um, da -da -da. so beautiful but they're okay still what's that say okay. 4.7 volts and it had uh what was that two Two point one six volts. Uh, so two volts resting, and five volts goes high to five. One point eight volts. And it only goes high for a moment. So I've got my little LED here. Got a resistor across it. What is that? Brown, green, red? One, five, zero, zero? <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, again, came out of the parts bin. It's what worked. 
So, <laughs> to uh, drive the LED and not, um, not kill the LED. So you gotta just take the, uh, take what works sometimes. Alright. Come on. Get under, there you go. Right! Call that milliamps, milliamps, yes, move your leads. Okie dokie, DC. Max. We should see the LED flash now. Alright, that's uh, 8 milliamps, but I've got, got her backwards. <laughs> Sorry. I feel very silly. No. I would have had the leads. No, the leads were correct. Oh, I am confusing myself now, guys. It's positive. I think this is how I had it, though. Okay, it flashes. So I did have it the right way around. I just must, must not have had a... Mush not a hit a mush not a had a good connection. See if that works any better. All right. Well, I see the eleven milliamps. Twelve milliamps. So, 12 milliamps, 5 volts. So a little light flashes to let you know that the coins made it. And uh, the counter ticks up. It's what it's supposed to do. Anyhow, there you go. It works. It does what it's supposed to. Um, I've got my stuff. I just need to, to start building the uh, case, uh, cutting, you know, taking some some measurements. I know that's uh, three and five eighths inches is what I need from the inside. Uh, my three and five eighths right here. That's the uh, the width that will work for front and back. Uh, I just need to get to cutting some metal. Uh, get it. Uh, bolted up, not bolted up, clamped up in, where's my clamps, clamps, oh, come on clamps, where are you at, there's clamps, but just need to get stuff cut and put into clamps, heated, brazed. Um, the one thing you do have to watch out for is if you've got another joint close, which I will, it'll be here, uh, you don't want to get it too hot because it'll weaken this joint, but having it in this clamp will isolate the heat because it'll be like like this, you know, and it'll isolate the heat to this joint and the clamps will heat sink the uh, excess heat away and not allow it to get over here and soften that, that joint up. Uh, so that's what I need to get to working on now. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll show, I'll shoot some videos showing how I'm doing that. I'll probably make the, uh, uh, 
one of them first. They're going to be the same front and back other than uh, where holes wind up getting drilled. Uh, so I'll probably go ahead and make one of them and uh, then I'll film myself making the second one. Uh, so anyhow, later. Because you know you're going to set them down, right? You're, you're going to set them down somewhere, and you're not going to have another one, so you just keep them with you, and that works pretty well. Well, keep a bunch of them at one centralized location. I'm the same way on the job site with. Uh, With uh, and that coin box is the same size. It just fits perfectly. It also fits through the post office box door perfectly. Um, it's just great. Just great. I don't know if you saw that. That's probably yeah. I'll pull that back in here. That's what I was saying. This shape, the same shape as that. Um, very convenient. And you've already seen you know, that shape is perfect to slide in and out. Uh, the depth of this box also works for the uh, depth of the uh, cabinet or the enclosure altogether. Uh, it's just all in, all in all very pleasing dimensionally, uh, which I like because OCD, uh, OCD me, needs it to be just right. So, anyhow, I've been marking out already. These are my, uh, bottoms and tops. I've got three of the four I'll need. I'll need two in the front and two in the rear. Uh, so, there's that. I'm going to grab another piece of aluminum and start marking it up. Make my room now. There's a piece sitting around here somewhere I'm not seeing. Anyhow, uh, some of this is pretty dirty, but it's okay. I'm just setting this up on that corner to hold it square. It just makes it easier for marking. Alright, so that's the four of those that I'm going to need. So, let's see what this inside dimension is. Uh, that's a little different. I want to be sure it's exact, a piece of exactly the same style. There's a piece. I'll unplug that for now. Makes it easier to work with. Even okay, that's a little more. That's eight and an eighth. Eight and an eighth. Eight and an eighth.
right, I need two more. I'm starting to be happy because I will have enough at least to do the outsides, the, the borders. Um, I will need short pieces like this to go between. Uh, but I should have scrap pieces that's enough for that. If not, I have some larger angle. I don't have a piece right here to show you, but I have some larger angle I can do that with. Um, but we should be good here. We should have everything we need. thinking about what I'm going to be saying next. I'm checking to make sure that my camera's still recording, and it is. Um, so that's all of that uh, marked out. So we will go get this uh, cut out. We'll cut it out uh, roughly with the porta band, and uh, then we'll clean up and sneak up to our lines. All of the lines that I have marked, all of my lines should disappear. Um, if I just eat the lines, everything should be nice and square and true. Um, so cut it roughly, uh, you know, through, well, as close as we can, you know, notch it out. And I'm going to make a rough with a bandsaw and cut them and then lop off the ears and uh, then take a uh, belt sander and uh, just, you know, sit here and uh, chew the lines away. And uh, that's my method. Okay, so quick little interlude. Um, Workbenches over here, two benches, three if you count the computer desk. Um, I've been gesturing over here towards my Jacob's ladder. Uh, that's it there running. I'll show you some more detail of it one day. And then my Connex wall art ball machine. So, uh, plug that in. On a flapper. Um, I've got videos of both of these already. I believe I've got one showing the Jacob's Ladder running. Um, it's not anything in depth on it explaining how I built it, what it's made from. Uh, just it running. And then, same for the ball machine, I have a uh, video showing how I built it. And, uh, they're not showing how I built it, showing it running, and I have made a few little tweaks here and there to the design uh, to make it uh, run a little smoother. Uh, that's its only problem, is that, uh, well, it doesn't have any. Right now it actually runs pretty smooth. I don't lose any balls, they don't get stuck anywhere. Um, so I'll probably shoot a new video for it showing the improvements I've made. Um, but once it's to show you, it shuts itself off sometimes because it is on a clapper and the sound of the balls clack, clanking with each other will shut it off. Um, but more times than you would think, it actually turns itself back on because it will shut itself off while there are balls in motion on the track and then the sound of them falling into the return chute uh, will uh, be in the correct rhythm uh, to initiate the uh, clapper. I uh, wanted to show you a lot of people don't know how to open a beer bottle with a lighter. So uh, hold the beer bottle round uh, with your finger and you're using a pivot uh, system. Your uh, finger is the fulcrum. <coughs> Use the flat part of the lighter to get maximum leverage and uh, rest the lighter uh, to pivot on your finger and push up into the uh, bottom corner of the bottle cap and then you simply rock the lighter over as you're pulling up and back 
with your finger and you'll pop the top off. Um, you will, I haven't done it here yet, actually there is a little divot right there. Um, put a little divot in your lighter. Don't try it with a cheap lighter. I only buy Bix. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Just a little interlude. Uh, ball machine, Jacob's Ladder. Uh, heading out to the shop. With the uh, angle aluminum. And uh, we're going to go cut this up. And uh, jig it up. And raise it up. Fix it up and polish it up, and this is going to be a lot of up. All right. So if you wonder why I'm squinting the way I am, it's I'm not squinting because um, I'm afraid of, of particles coming back. And it's just um, I'm squinting because that is the face I make that makes uh, full contact all the way around uh, with my eye protection, and that creates the uh, the impenetrable seal that I'm after. So that's why I squint like this because it. It protects me. So. And it makes me look cool. Well, clearly I have an error in my measurement somewhere. <laughs> Oops. Wow, here too. What the heck is wrong? What am I doing? Those match. So apparently, this piece is wrong. This one is long, I can cut it to fit. So that's no biggie. This one is short. Actually, so that is that does make it a biggie. A biggie's good. <laughs> this one I can cut three more times and it still won't be big enough. So I've got something in my safety shoe. There we go. Alright. So that one's correct. That one needs to be cut and I need one more of those. Right. On we go. All right, let's get it in clamps. All right, so I took some measurements and these are dead on what they need to be. Um, got them in clamps. These clamps forced them into uh, 90s. Um, I've got three clamps like this that are solid and then I've got a fourth clamp that has uh, jaws that move so you can do custom angles if you want to do octagons. Um, 
but it doesn't hold it it doesn't hold them very well and I'm not I'm not trusting it so I'm just going to do them uh, two at a time like this um, and we will hmm I want to hold it like that or do I want to do them like this I think I want to do it like this. Alright, there we go. Let's see. Alright. I had talked about the, uh, the stick I'm using. Working temperature 730 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or 390 degrees centigrade. Uh, what do they call this? It'll have its name on here. Come on. Wee! Aluma weld rods. Aluma weld rods. All right, and come with comprehensive instructions. We'll set that aside because we don't want to burn them. Um, the key is clean. The uh, the joints have to be clean, and you have to get to the correct heat. Uh, you can get to the correct heat using propane. I'm using MAP gas. MAP gas gets much hotter than propane. If you use, don't just go out and buy the yellow cylinder and use it with your regular propane head. Your regular propane head has a uh, blue trigger, most likely. Uh, be sure that the uh, the the head matches the fuel uh, because if this portion up here is not not rated to handle, uh, then the higher temperatures you will melt this. Um, so. Well, heat about like that. Um, good heat, even heat. Um, you want it to be clean. Uh, from me cutting this and grinding it, it should be clean enough. Uh, we will see. Is that unfinished beer up there? That is. I don't know if you can see up there. Alright, I don't know if you saw how that flowed in there, but it, it flows in. Um, okay, I think it's in focus now. I can't I pulled it out just a little bit, so. Alright. And then of course I kicked the camera. Alright, first thing you see the moisture running out of the metal. Some of that flare-up is old glue, carp, uh, wood glue, on these clamps from being used for carpentry work. Uh, I'm giving it a scratch test, so as you scratch it, if it's hot enough, it will start to flow when you scratch it. There you see it started to flow. And we'll run that in there and then up the corner 
and then heat it to make sure it offload and that is it and uh, yeah so we'll let those cool a little bit and then we'll go quench them uh, don't want to quench it very very hard right now uh, just let it sit here and 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 air quench a little bit uh, so it doesn't uh, go wibbly wobbly and that's it so I'll move the clamps to the other side again these clamps will work as a heat sink to keep the heat of me brazing this side uh, as I'm applying heat here it'll keep this side from coming loose uh, uh, and yeah I'll go ahead and do that I'm not going to record it all because it's all the same thing over and over all right that's another part of it done uh, hope you're enjoying it and uh, we'll be back with you Failure was always an option. Look cool though. I mean that was fine. It didn't go boom. I wanted it to go boom. Oh well. Always next year. Okay, so, um, here it is. Um, came out pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with those. I have uh, disconnected this stuff from the power supply. I discharged the cap. Uh, so, um, now, so that's how it's going to look inside of there. front panel. That'll be the back. There'll be another piece of plexi up here that will have the, uh, the counter mounted in it. Open the door to remove the coins. Hit the reset for the counter. Um, that's it. I need to uh, cut some little pieces of uh, bar to go between here and then cut the plexiglass box and the back piece of plexi that goes over the door. Cut all that, uh, drill some holes, yada yada yada. I've already measured that uh, the bars need to be four inches long exactly and the plexiglass uh, needs to be five and a half inches uh, from inside to inside so there's a three-quarter inch so you have the bars in the middle and then three-quarters of an inch uh, sticks inside uh, and then these will just clamp together <coughs> anyhow so you'll see what I'm talking about but uh, that's where we're at. Uh, it's going, coming along pretty nice. I think it's going to to look uh, look pretty good. Uh, pretty, it, it, it's what I was shooting for. So, and I I am being responsible. Um, mm. Oh 
Oh yeah. And then uh, wash it down and But, uh, yeah, eating a little bit, getting some carbohydrates in uh, with my liquid carbohydrates. Um, it's just uh, even it out there. So Happy Fourth of July. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to include. I, I just set off uh, what was supposed to be a sparkler bomb. Uh, it was a really nice fountain. Uh, it, it was, it was more exciting than just sparklers by themselves and it made a lot of smoke so in those ways I was successful and uh, so I'll probably I'll probably include it uh, just to make this video a nice long video um, which is what it's, it's shaping up to be I'm not sure how long it's going to be I'm sure I'm going to be over an hour uh, hour and a half probably um, but that is, it is what it is. Uh, let me grab a piece and show you something I'm going to do. Da, 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 da. So, this is an AISG controller. Um, it is made to uh, plug into your computer and takes 19 volts in and uh, comes out on a seven, eight, eight pin, uh, Basically an 8-pin Molex, uh, no, an 8-pin DIN uh, connector, um, and it talks to uh, devices like this. That, uh, it's a remote electronic tilt mechanism that goes on the back of uh, cellular band transmit receive uh, uh, base station antennas uh, to move louvers or uh, to move the uh, radiating fans inside the antenna to change the radiating pattern of the antenna. Phew! Um, I have another one that is better than this, uh, so I don't really need this, but I do want the connector, uh, the power connector, so I'm going to harvest this. Let's go ahead and do this right now. I was going to do this in a different video, but why? Let's uh, let's set things out of the way. Measuring apparatus, nice. Marking apparatus, also very important. So yeah, I was going to save this for later, but there are so many fireworks going off. I don't know if you'll be hearing uh, any of them in this video. I seriously doubt it. I'm using the uh, camera's built-in microphone, which is pretty crappy. Sorry, sorry about that. I, I know the audio is going to be absolutely horrible uh, because of that. But, and I've also got the AC running in the background. I know you can hear that. I've turned it off in the past, uh, left it running full blast to get the room good and chilly, and uh, turned it off whenever I started a shooting video. But uh, it's just really, really humid right now. It's rained a little bit, which is great that it has rained on the 4th of July just as the sun was going down. People started shooting off fireworks. We had a good little shower come through. Uh, enough to wet everything, which is, that, that's wonderful, uh, you know, keep some fires from getting started. Uh, but because of that, it's gotten really humid, so I've got the air conditioning unit running uh, to get some of the humidity out of the air and make it a little more bearable. Uh, Newcastle Brown Ale uh, helps make it just a little more bearable as well. I do have one more, one left after this. Um, I don't drink, I, I, I know I am right now, um, and it's, it's helping, maybe, hindering, maybe, I'm not sure, we'll see. Hold on. 
but uh, it, uh, I, I, it, it's, it's okay to, to, to have a drink every now and then, uh, to enjoy a drink every now and then, and that, that's what I'm doing, so uh, I hope you're enjoying it with me. Well, so that there is none of the cir none of the circuitry is inside here. That I could have sworn I've taken one of these apart before, and you would think I would not be surprised by this that I would have seen it before. But that is, it is literally just you know the the pins from the connector uh, running to the the wires. It's taking its power and its data that it needs. And there, there is a circuit board in here with a little 8-pin uh, chip. And there are two, uh, uh, a red and a green uh, surface mount LED that flash back and forth to tell you that you're transmitting data. It's a RS-45 bus uh, that it communicates on. Uh, so you can communicate with, on these uh, via the serial connector on older computers. Uh, this the system has been around for a while. I don't know that anything has has serial anymore. Yeah, I wasn't going to cut it, but there's really no reason not to. So we'll just set that aside. I know, I know that this tool is not made for that, but when you've done it enough times, uh, you, you, you get, you get, uh, you can do it without really, without really screwing anything up and, and marring the finish and, and uh, messing up your, your hardware, so. Uh, but it is definitely not the right tool. I do recommend fitted tools, the right tool for the job every time. Uh, but in my shop, that's not always the easiest thing. Uh, hitting my computer back there, getting it back running so I can see that this camera is doing what it's supposed to. Uh, but having the right fitted tool is not always as easy as you would hope. Okay. Chances are that nut won't be used. I will uh Hmm. That's going to be unfortunate. I don't I don't know how I feel about this. It'll have to be up there. So I will put, there will be two LEDs. I have an LED back here, um, and so I'll have my, my power jack here, and then there will be an LED right over here, and then the Omron display, the counter, <laughs> counter will be here. I can't hold it all together, but uh, that's how it'll go in. I didn't, I wasn't planning on another LED right here, but for symmetry's sake, for me to have this power over here and it not drive me crazy, I need an LED there as well. Uh, up here on the front, I will have an LED. I will have two LEDs, one for power. So just a, saw, a, a red always on LED, and then I will have a green LED that will flash uh, when the coin is accepted. And back here, I will have the uh, the uh, 
power plug. And one of the two, I'm not sure yet if I want it to be uh, flash when a coin is accepted or a solid state uh, power indicator. I think I'll have this one back here be the solid state power indicator and have the one on the front uh, flash when the coin is accepted. Uh, because you'll be able to look through the front and see the, the st solid st steady red glow. I'll probably want to drive it pretty hard too. I'll probably drive that indicator, the power on indicator pretty hard uh, so that it, it is really, really visible through this case, uh, it'll help illuminate uh, the side of the mechanism. And so, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. But, uh, battery's dying on the camera. I need to get a camera, some kind of camera that I can uh, I can power power while it records. Uh, no, surprisingly none of mine do. I guess uh, it's to, to mitigate its interference. I'm not sure if that's the reason. But you can't you can't power and record at the same time, which is unfortunate. And this will definitely not be thrown out. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull the cover off the other side real quick. The screwdriver is not fitted for this. It's the wrong size, but push hard enough. Because this is pretty nice. Um, it's monitoring one, two, three, four, four of the pins, and it's referencing ground. Um, now the other pins are do come through. Well, two more of the pins do come through and are soldered. Uh, it does not have the center pin, which is pin number eight, or the bottom center pin, which is pin number two. Uh, but it does have six of the eight pins and a ground reference. Um, and I do have a bunch of these cables and most of those cables are are made the same way. Uh, they don't have all of the uh, all of the conductors. I am going to have to loosen that more to get it back in. But this is a it's a pretty nice Pretty nice breakout box, uh, project box to use with that uh, to make use of. Uh, that screw is going to have to come all the way out. A nice box to make use of some of those cables uh, in the future for something who knows what. Uh, but that's, that's how it goes. I don't have to know what it's going to be for to know. Uh, that this is a handy, handy, nice little, well-made thing that would be good to have. So we will we will keep this. Throw that like that is in a project box or in in one of my my totes, one of my gray boxes. Uh, this is the part that we have salvaged. Uh, that we are going to use for our project, and we do we have this which uh, has all of the bits built in. It is a, seri uh, a serial uh, USB to serial cable uh, that has five volts and serial bus uh, RS45 serial bus 
coming out, I can use this in a project in the future. I'll go ahead and I just pulled the grommet off of that cable. I'll go ahead and put that grommet back in the box. And uh, so yeah, that will go in my gray totes. I'll know it's there and I might pull it out and use it for a future project, but we've got the part we want out of it. Um, yeah, battery is dying. It's going to be shutting off here soon if it's not already yelling at me. Uh, it doesn't look like it's warning me yet, but I'm getting winded, or not winded, but lengthy. So, uh, cheers, and uh, we'll shoot some more video once we get some more parts made and ready to, uh, ready to go for final assembly and wiring. Uh, 73s, and we'll talk to you later. But there it is. Again, haven't built the sides yet. And I'm not going to build the sides just yet. That, that'll be the last thing I, I will make. Um, So the sides I'm actually going to build onto this and they will be glued into here so how this will go together uh, so no no LED in the top of this anymore you saw that I made a annotation because I, I, I'm editing stuff as I go obviously uh, so this the uh, plug loom, whatever you want to call it, for the mechanism will be hot melt glued right here and uh, plug in. So uh, all the wiring will be kept back here and this is a pluggable unit. So uh, you'll put this on and then uh, you will slide this over with the, the sides will be mounted to this and you'll slide all of that over no, I've got it right but I won't be able to reach over there and do that Alright, so it will take some doing. You'll have to, unfortunately, you'll have to convince the threads to line up with their holes. And I'm not super in love with that, but once it's together, you shouldn't be taking it back apart. So, yeah, I'll, I will live with that. Um, but you'll put that all together, and then... I'm not putting the hardware back in because I'm going to be taking it right back out. You'll flip it over and then at that point you can open this up and the wire is hanging right here and you simply reach through the door and plug it in and uh, access to your little coin thing. So power I've put here uh, just so the, the wires run down uh, the back hinge side. I've chosen to put the power here. And then uh, the LED. I'm going with just the single LED that I had in the mock-up. Uh, the, the indicator LED that will signal when coin is received. Uh, there's no need to get uh, putting anything extra in there. Uh, it's just going to kill a battery. Because I'm, I'm going to wind up putting a battery in here one day. So we'll just keep it simple. And uh, so that's how it will assemble. But again, I do not, I don't have the, uh, the stuff made up for the sides yet. So we're going to go ahead and set that to the side for now. Um, I guess if I, I don't know, if I'm going to hot melt and glue something in, I should go ahead and get that ready. Uh, 
Uh, let me walk around. All right. Let's hope we don't throw breakers. Uh, because that is plugged into the same circuit as the soldering iron. Soldering iron is warm. All right. Sorry, I'm not talking. I know I'm not. <laughs> Obviously, I know I'm not talking. Um, I guess I should be. Uh, what to talk about? Why have I I, I? I said earlier that you know I've always wanted. To uh, shoot, uh, you know, because I've, I've, sh I've put a decent amount of video on YouTube throughout the years. Um, why do I want to do project videos? Because I get so much pleasure and enjoyment from watching everybody else's videos on YouTube um, and you know I do some of these kind of things too I build stuff so I might as well make a video also because if you know, yeah I might as well shoot video also because if one person sees my video and it makes them smile or they enjoy it or heck it's, it's background music and they fall asleep watching my video and I help someone get some a restful night's sleep um, even if that is all that happens all that comes of it I, I'm, I'm okay with that um, but uh, I, I enjoy watching people's videos, and why doesn't this want to sit right there? We go. It just doesn't want to, so it's going to sit like that. Come on. I enjoy watching everybody else's videos very much. And I figure if I should I should give back, I guess. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna re 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 redo the take of that. I, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time here. Just use your helping hands. Like you're supposed to. <laughs> what the heck? That didn't even take. There we go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, guys. I probably just killed that resistor. It's, it'll be fine, but. I'm just having some some major technical difficulties. I, I still continue having major technical difficulties. It's because there's a camera watching me. I guarantee you that's why. That resistor wasn't already dead, it is now. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, no, I killed that poor thing. Let's see. One five. One 
One, four, five. Okay, she's fine. Resilient little frick, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Hot glue gun should be warm by now. Oh, I had it set to low temp. Let's give it a little bit up on high temp. Let it get good and ooey and gooey. Red will get the orange with white stripe that goes to the LED. That's our positive. So that will go with the red along to the positive. This black needs to run up there. It is the ground, but it also needs to run up there as the as the uh, ground reference uh, to increment the counter. So we will do this here. than I was expecting. I know it's because I have a camera on me. I know it is. That looks like poop. So yes, that's a sock. But just so you know why there's a sock in my toolbox. It's got my safety glasses in it. Just an old sock. Keeps them from getting scratched up. But I, uh, my tip was dirty. So it is clean now. Let's moisten the tip. Back side. Wet the whole thing. There we go. I don't have a sponge, I should. power for, that should power the machine, and that is power to the LED, the other side of that was gray, alright, so the camera beeped at me, but she tells me that she stopped, so, we started it back up. All right. 
Last thing it would be the uh, reset. Now these are the wires that I had on the step up counter uh, to begin with that would actually step it up, but I I just landed the wires to step it up, and so I I removed these and uh, figured I would use them for the uh, reset. Why not? I'm so used to seeing this counter for years. I've had again. This is a part that I've had on my shelf. I've had this counter for years, uh, and the coin mech for a, well, quite a while. Also, a post office box store for a very long time. Um, and I've just I've I had these orange wires uh, coming off the counter. Uh, to begin with, you know, I've had them on there from the get-go, from when I got the counter, I put them on there to, you know, just to test it out and see it work. And so they've been on this counter for, uh, four, five, six, six years now probably. So I'll just move them over to the other side, use them for the reset. Add a can of compressed air, hold it upside down, blow it on there. Fix that up real quick. Yes, that was definitely the smell of burning flesh. I must have gotten my finger. Yep, there it is. Tip of my thumb. It is a callus there anyway, so I didn't burn anything important. Okay. Well, that, that should work. Alright, so here. So that would go on and this would go around it with all of the sides on it. Why does this side feel taller? I don't know. Turn it around because you've got sides on it. Turn it around, Jim. Grab the wire. Plug it in. And and and. Where's my end? There is my end. Get that out of here. Turn the temp down on the soldering iron. Put in an empty coin receptacle box. The counter is at zero. We have power right here. Let's get rid of some of the schmutz. 
off the desk here. Huh, that's interesting. So plugging the counter, or plugging it in, counted one. I really think it's power. It's just not getting enough. But I have a 12 volt power supply. I'm about to lose my security cam. But, oh well. But wait, this is reverse polarity. Yep. We're about to make this really confusing. But at this point, I don't care if it's really fucking confusing. Yeah, it's just not getting enough power. Same as, same as before, so. Righty oh well, welcome back. I I I thought I was I was going to be done with this. I I I was going to put plexiglass sides on it. So the my plan was to have the sides uh, the plexiglass uh, extend uh, three quarter three quarters of an inch into this angle. The angle is one inch, so have it extend three quarters in and have angle cut. Uh, to four inches to fit these corners and I was going to glue the angle and the plexi together and it was just going to sit inside uh, clamp between the uh, two outer shells and I, I just I didn't I didn't I didn't want to do that some I just I didn't like it some part of me didn't like it and then I thought about expanded uh, expanded metal sheet and I, I think this uh, could look pretty decent wrapped around wrapped around the uh, this we get that out of here by the way It's just, it, it's, I don't know how many hours I have sat here now just feeding quarters into it. It is so, so addictive. Um, 
but I need five and one half inch width. So, and this is one foot, so I can get uh, two strips out of this. And I've got a break in there. I'm gonna go bend it on a break, and I'm going to bend uh, through the center here to give myself an overlap uh, that I can. Uh, rivet to so I can make two halves and uh, rivet them together and have that just hold itself in there under tension and I think that's going to look really nice so uh, let's get some measurements here uh, five and one half inches and that I know is also five and one half so that's pretty easy, pretty convenient. So let's go ahead and mark where we are going to to break the, or uh, split this at. Five and a half. So if I go through that right there. Yeah. And this should work out right because the, the spacing should be half inch spacing. Um, this did, this did make me uh, make me laugh a little bit here. Uh, so this uh, cardboard sleeve is sized to hold this piece of metal. Um, it is 12 inches wide by. 24 inches long and that's nice and they, they have it printed you know this screen print is made for this package um, but they didn't need to put the check mark because every piece of metal that goes in this package will be 12 by 24 uh, they didn't give themselves another option to check here it just uh, made me chuckle a little bit um, it's good for chimney screens security screens pet cages and barbecue grills um, good to know I'm hoping it works for this uh, it doesn't list uh, DIY coin mechanism piggy banks as an ideal use but we'll see how it works um, I did get 18 gauge uh, 13 gauge if I was building a barbecue I want 13 gauge. Uh, 18 gauge would be ideal for your chimney screen and this, just something easy that I can bend on my brake. And I got the half inch spacing, uh, tighter spacing, it just uh, better in small scale like this. Uh, again, if it was a barbecue grill, I'd probably get exactly the opposite. I'd probably get three quarter inch spacing and 13 gauge, but a barbecue grill this is not. All right. satisfying. Alright, and it was five and a half uh, is the top section. I want to leave myself I want to bend it here. Uh, and that will give me my overhang going down that I want to rivet to, to the other piece. And then it was five and a half. That. Right here.
Uh, just shy of 10, but just, just shy. Uh, yeah. RCH, uh, Nastic, a Skosh, a Smidgen, uh, you know, a Micron, whatever, you know, just, a, it's, it's, it's just a, a, a frog's hair, you know, it's just a tiny bit, uh, but it's there. Uh, but yeah, just a skosh under 10. We'll go with skosh today. So that is right through here. the rest of these on through that was down straight through the middle. Trying not to transfer too many tiny little black dots to the workbench. I just gave myself one right there. There we go. I should continue that one just well, that's just a brake line, so by the time I'm been breaking that, this will have been cut off. I did want to extend, so I extended these lines past because my first cut, I want to cut this. That way it leaves me with a good, nice, usable chunk. Um, and then I will take this swipe here. Um, that way I'm leaving, it, it's just the most economic that way, uh, and I'm leaving myself nice big chunk and then a little uh, piece right here uh, anyhow but yeah I didn't need to extend these three lines because those are just break lines and this gives me both halves that I'll need uh, to do here and then here uh, this side will have uh, this section here that will fold up and that will give me a place to put some flat washers and some rivets to join these two together and there'll be another spot right here where they overlap that I will have flat washers and rivets. Um, and that's what I drew this extra piece here for but it, just, it, it occurs to me that this will overlap here so I don't need this. Uh, so this is my cut line and we don't need that. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's always good to, to discuss uh, even if it's with yourself which I do most of the time. The only, you know, I'd, I'd be sitting here having this conversation whether I was recording or not, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. So, uh, it, it works for uh, the process. Will that go on there? That doesn't seem to want to go on there, but I want it to. There we go. It's just getting it started. There we go the key for this thing on its own little tab. Obviously I won't be able to wrap that around there once it's all said and done, but I don't want to leave it. I've gotten lucky all these years with it sitting on my shelf, uh, this post office box door. I've had, I don't know how long I've had this post office box door. It is at least, um, we've been together, Shane and I have been together for 11 years, over 11 years now. Uh, so I've had this about 10 years, uh, 10, 11 years, something like that, quite a while. And I've always stored it with the key in it, and I haven't broken it yet. Uh, pretty lucky there. Uh, but I don't want to store it with it in it because you knock this off a shelf, uh, you're going to break the key off in it. And it's, it's, I can't just go to the locksmith and say, hey, I need you to duplicate a post office box key for me. They won't do that. They'll tell you that the post office will do that for you. And I can't just take this into the post office and be like, hey, I don't have a post office box, but I have a key. Will you make me a copy? And even if I bring this, you know, if I brought this in and shown it to them, and I was like, you know, listen, you know, it, it, you know, they, they might would. They might would make me a copy, a spare. Um, but my best bet's just to, uh, just to uh, leave the key out so I don't risk damaging it. And if I ever did, I actually have, I will shoot a video of these at some point here soon. Here they are. Um, let's see which way is the right way up. There we go. 
of uh, two more post office boxes, uh, or post office box, do box doors. So uh, this style here that has uh, two combination wheels, uh, A, A through K, and then uh, L through V, and uh, spaces in between. Uh, let's see, so you've got one, two, three, four, uh, four, four spaces between each letter. So uh, uh, you can do the math on how many combinations you have there. You just choose one on each each dial. Uh, it, it's pretty easy to force this one by sitting here and holding tension on the handle and sitting and feeling where there's a, a soft spot. There's a soft spot, and there's the soft spot, and you, you get in. Uh, and then this style, so this is this same door, uh, but this one has the combina uh, combination wheel and combination mechanism on the back of it. This one was, you can see it has the, uh, the letters going around, uh, was this style uh, back in the day, and it has simply been uh, retrofitted, upgraded, however uh, you want to say to this EL lock system. Uh, I think this one was too easy to force as well. Uh, it's not that hard to force once you uh, have, have taken it apart and looked at it and understand how it works. So, anyhow, uh, so if, if I ever did lose that key in this, I couldn't open this door anymore. Um, I could I could replace it for, for this door here. Uh, I would swap out the glass because that's I painted that glass. It's 42 on it. Uh, lucky number, Douglas Adams, like the universe and everything. Uh, so I'd, I'd swap out the glass and uh, and swap this door into it if I uh, if I had to. But I'll shoot a video uh, later of these. I'll take them apart and show how the uh, the locks in them work. Uh, so for now, we're going to go cut this out, uh, get it bent up, uh, throw some pop rivets in it, and uh, make the outside body for my coin mechanism. I'll probably, after I have that, it's not as easy to pick up, I'll try to, I'll probably come up with some kind of handle or something on the top that makes it easier to carry. Uh, we'll figure that out when we get there. Alright. Alright, so... Back at uh, the workbench out in the garage. And I remember which cut I said I was going to make first. Go ahead and get our cords out from under there. Be awesome if I prepared for this stuff ahead of time, right? And actually had my workspace clear clean, ready to go, but nah, <laughs> nah, we're not going to be doing that, I don't know why I'm bringing it back that far either, I'm cutting out here, And I'm not clamping that very tight or very precise right now because it is just for cutting. And do I have an angle grinder up there with a cutting wheel on it already? I don't see one. And not over here. I was planning on using this anyway. Um, it's just if I had had faster, I was going to use faster. Uh, yeah, I should probably bring that out to a point that I can actually get to it and cut it.
don't want to, uh, you know, just cut that off and let it hit the ground. It might hit my, uh, my safety shoes and, uh, I don't want to put a scuff in my safety shoes. All right, there's one cut. See that time it, whoa, that's hot. Remember that metal's hot if you just finish cutting it with abrasive media. And don't try to pick it up off the floor immediately after cutting. <coughs> wow. I'm that guy. Ugh. All right, there's that. I think there's one last cut. That's right there. Did I really just do that? I did. Okay. So I have a convenient hiding spot, storage spot, for my brake handles. And they're in two holes in the bench here. But I put my expanded metal directly over <laughs> my, uh, my handles that I need to bend it. It's an L.
I guess technically that was a J. I am sorry. I am going to single-handedly be responsible for the miseducation of our, our nation's youth uh, by telling you that that was an L when it clearly had the, uh, the little, little, little piece at the end that made it a J. I don't use lowercase letters, but I guess it's still a J. Sorry. J -j 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 -j. Instead of la 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 la. Okay, so welcome back to the workbench. Um, we have our JJ's, our JJ grills here, ready to go. Um, so, yeah, I guess let's put this thing together. Uh, this is my front, uh, front uh, piece of channel, and I wanted to set these in the channel. Oh, it's a little tighter than I was expecting. Oy. Come on. Let's just hand fist it in there. There we go. Huh. huh. Like a glove. So, wow, that was a little tighter than I expected. I, I hope. I hope. Did I think this out as well as I thought I did? Okay, that that fell into place. I wish the first one would have went so easily. Uh, it would have made me not look so so. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, going to put these in, but. I'm going to leave them loose until it's all the way together, so I'm not going to use these washers. I'm going to use some washers with little, or some uh, nuts with some sun washers built into them. Because those will bite the back of this grid really well as I go to tighten this up later. So what I figure, if I leave these loose-ish for now, what, ooh, what that will allow me to do is completely screw stuff up. <laughs> if I leave them a little loose-ish for now, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll go ahead and tighten this one down. And I can always loosen it back up if I need to. Yeah, that's what we'll go with. Um, what I was going to say, if I leave them loose for now, I can then um, make this fit more tightly once it's all together and then tighten it down, but 
that doesn't seem to that it's going to work very well. It's just going to come loose as I'm trying to put stuff on. Actually, it just occurred to me, if I put those in now, I won't be able to get this in. So, my holes still line up. That's nice. a little better once it's all together. Alright, well, starting to look nice. Nice. Now, I love how the, this just the plug here and the plug's ready to go right here in the back. You just open the door and hook it up. So, that is what allows me to be able to just slide this thing on here. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yes. 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 There it is. Oh, I need to line up. And remember, I was worried about being able to line up my pieces of all thread. Well, now that I have the side open, I can stick a pokey device inside and line up my all thread to my holes. That worked surprisingly well. Oh wow, I am liking this. Whenever you get to the end of a project and it just comes together. Oh yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Come on, get on there. If I put it on the tool, the handle will help me get 90. There we go. Get that bolt started. Cinch it down. Um, this tool, by the way, is called a cam tool. It's 7 sixteenths and quarter inch, I believe. Uh, it is used for opening telco cabinets and pedestal, telco pedestals, fiber enclosures, uh, uh, cell cabinet, base station cabinets, uh, just uh, all kinds of telco stuff uh, gets opened with a cam tool. Uh, electrical stuff too, I suppose. Um, but it's not just a regular 7 sixteenths nut driver or socket, it's a uh, thin wall, so a, a standard 7 sixteenths would be too thick to fit most applications where a cam tool is supposed to be required. Um, but it just works as a really great handheld 7 sixteenths uh, driver. And that, that's what I use it for. Now I do keep it because I have to get into to cabinets for work uh, that require a cam tool. So you ha I have to have one, but I, I like it because it is a multi-use tool that way. Oh wow, that's... That's looking really nice. I'm really happy with this. Alright, tighten up our screw here on the side for the grating. That's nice and tight. Oh yes. Oh yes. Nice. There she is. Oh, so nice. Uh, it currently has 68 counts on the meter, so let's go ahead and set tools out of the way. Dump, dump our coins out here. Go ahead and hush phone. I'm shooting a video. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and watch the meter. Zeroed it out. Beautiful. Empty coin box. 
close the door. Sorry, I'm getting excited now. Find the wire. Plug it in. What the? Ah! It helps if I plug it back in. <laughs> Silly me. Alright, and I saw the LED flash as I plugged it in. That's nice. Make sure. Hey, it works. Alright. I mean, I, I, I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me put more quarters in. I've done that plenty now. I, I'm i very happy with that. I wasn't going to do the sides. I, I knew I didn't want to do the plexiglass sides on it because it's just the front and back are plexi and it was just, it was, I didn't want it. Um, but that expanded steel, that's, it looks like a really angry napkin dispenser. Um, so, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm happy with it. I'm going to set this on a shelf. I probably will get a battery for it at some point and figure out how to get, you know, mount a battery inside here. Because uh, it, it having to be plugged in is the only inconvenience. I do like that the, you know, that it's a non-powered counter, that the, the counter will stay, it will hold its number uh, even when, once you unplug it. So... Anyhow, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to shoot more like this, I hope. Uh, I know this thing was really long. I uh, It's a big project, but I plan on just shooting little... Uh, look at this cool thing I've got on my workbench. Uh, here's a little update on a project I'm working on. Um, I mean, I've got a, a whole bunch of, of videos um, I'm thinking about, you know, that I, I, I could do. And maybe... Maybe shooting these videos will be the impetus for me actually finishing some projects that I've been trying to work on here. I'll show you one that I probably should finish, which would be nice if I did. Um, all right. So... over there. Now, let's see, I've got these two quarters, it likes to reject. Yeah, see it rejected that one, it took that one, it took it that time, um, but it likes to reject those. Anyhow, let's put another quarter in. Woo, so fun. Um, this is going to be a base for a uh, four track or four channel Lionel uh, train speed controller, the classic one that Gomez Adams had for his train set and the Adams family. Um, Gomez? Yeah. Yeah, Gomez Adams had for his train set. Um, we have one of those to control our trains uh, in the house, but the Lionel controller outputs AC and our trains are DC trains, so this. This base, the, these holes accept the base for the controller, so it'll sit on top of here, and you have uh, double pull, double throw switches, a, a line of them here uh, for the four channels. And underneath we have four, not just one, not two, not three, and not five either, but four full bridge rectifiers, and. Uh, they, uh, they take the, the output from the, uh, the Lionel controller, uh, four channels, so we've got red and black as the channel, green and orange as the channel, 
uh, blue and yellow as a channel and brown and white as a channel. So it takes those in, rectifies the AC to DC. It doesn't have to be smooth for these uh, trains. Uh, it, it's fine, just rough, uh, rough rectified DC. And then goes through the double pull, double throw switches uh, as a DC uh, polarity flip flop and then has the output uh, right here. And I have these extra pieces of wire ready to run this under the train table, the layout table, uh, to the different tracks to power them where they need to be. Um, but so yeah, that's you know, you know something else. I need to finish working on this. It's it's ready to go. You know, I just I'm so close. I've ran the race. I just haven't crossed crossed the finish line yet. Um, but so it, it's projects like this that maybe shooting these videos. Uh, people can get uh, some information out of them. I've got a huge, super diverse uh, field of interest. Anything technical, I enjoy. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to make something for everyone. Uh, some, that, that you know, hopefully that people will enjoy. And if it is, it, if it is the impetus that gets me, uh, gets me up and gets me completing some of these projects, it'll help me get my shop clean. Um, and it might be the motivation. Uh, that I need uh, to, you know, just get some stuff done rather than just sitting around here and, and piddling, you know, and, and working, you know, working five minutes on this project and ten minutes on that project and a day on this project, but never bringing any of them to fruition, which has been my, my problem. I've got a, a Brazilian projects going, and a Brazilian is a huge number, by the way. And so maybe this will will be what lets me say, Look, I'm done. This this is done. You know, there are parts in this that I've had sitting on a shelf, taking up room in my shop for ten years, and finally there is something that I can, you know, put back on the shelf in my shop and take up room for twenty more years. Um, I don't know. This one might go to the house. I don't. I don't know. Um, my Jacob's Ladder doesn't live in the house. I'm very proud of it, but it is dangerous, and I don't want any guest uh, to touch it and, and you know get hurt. This this is not dangerous. I can have this in the house, and you know as as a hey look what I built, look at something I made. That I can show someone, but it's out here where it's safe. Nobody can get to that. Nobody's going to be in my shop unless I'm here with them, and I can protect them from the Jacob's Ladder that way. Uh, so I don't know if this will be out here in the shop or if it will be in the house, but yay, done project. I'm going to stop rambling now. Thank you. Um, please hit subscribe. I don't know. I post a bunch of random stuff. Um, so uh, you, you get what you get, uh, but uh, there you go. And thank you. Thank you.